All right, 2013 math counts, sprint round from chapter competition. The rest of the back page, problems 28, 29, and 30. All right, we have a little workspace here just in case we need it. We'll probably need it eventually. All right, so what fraction of the first 100 triangular numbers are evenly distributed, divisible by 7? Express your answer as a common fraction. All right. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I do know what a triangular number is. A triangular number is a number when we follow this pattern. Well, one makes a triangle. Three, six, not only does it make a triangle, it makes a really great configuration for bowling. And if I continue this, notice how I'm adding two, adding three, adding four. All right. So I'm going to make a list of triangular numbers. And if, they're, if the triangular number is divisible by seven, I'm going to Put a circle around it or something. So we have 1, 3, 6, 10. Add 5, it's 15. Add 6, it's 21. Okay. Add 7, that's 28. All right, so I have 2 already in the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, well, what about the next one? I add, uh, add 8, I get 36. Now that is not divisible by 7. 36 plus 9 is 45, plus 10, 55, plus 11, 66, plus 12, and that's 78, uh, plus 13, and that is uh, 91. Now, 91 is divisible by 7. It looks prime. It, it really looks prime, but 7 goes into 9 once, carry the 2, 7 goes into 21, now, add, if I add 7 onto this, I get 98, which obviously is also divisible by 7. I think I see a pattern. Let, let's see. I'll, I'll add 7 more, and I get 105. It's not 7 more. I add, uh, shoot, what do I add? Hold on a second. What do I add? <laughs> I made a mistake here, didn't I? I added 12. I had 13. I need to add 14. That isn't 98. I am sorry. So plus 14, I get 105. I knew 105. I was just getting so excited here. Okay, so I add 15 to 105. I get 120, which is not divisible by 7. So the pattern re returns. So that means that every 7, I'll have exactly two triangular numbers that are multiples of 7. So First 100 divided by 7, I get 1, carry the 3, 14, and 2 sevenths. Now that 2 sevenths is important. That is the next two numbers, which clearly are not going to be divisible by 7. Okay, so I have 14 groups, and, each, and in each group I have 2. 14 times 2 is 28. But it didn't ask for how many. It says, what are the... Uh, what fraction? So that's 28 out of 100. 4 goes into both of them, so that's 7 out of 20. 25 is my answer. All right, analog clocks. Don't you love them? So this analog clock has a tip of a minute hand, and this is A. Tip of the hour hand is B. And we know that this short distance is x. We know that this distance is twice. And I just put x because I didn't know what else to put. It didn't tell us, which is fine because we are looking for a ratio. And ratios, we don't need to know the actual distance. We just, just make sure it fits the criteria. And so we want to have a ratio of the travel of point B over the travel of point A. And B is going to be, they want B over three hours. And A, they want over nine hours. Okay. So that means we're going to be tracking this point nine times around this. And the distance that point A is going to travel is the circumference, right? The circumference is equal to diameter times pi. Well, what's the diameter of, of this line here? Well, if the radius is 2x, the diameter has to be 4x. So the circumference is equal to 4x times pi. All right, excellent. And uh, it's going to go around nine times. So we get 36x times pi. All right. So this is for a point A. Okay. For point B, 
Well, it's only going to go for three hours. So three hours, one, two, three is only a quarter. So we want the circumference, but we only want the qu a quarter of it. So the diameter is going to be 2x because the radius is just x. So we have 1 fourth times 2x times pi. Well, that's just 1 half x times pi. Now this may look scary, but it's not going to be. Now let's put it together. So for b, we have 1 half x times pi over 36 x times pi. Well, what's going to happen to the x times pi? They will cancel out. And so I have 1 half over 36. Now, 1 half over 36 is definitely not a common fraction. So let's just multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, and we'll turn this into a whole number. Well, 2 times 1 half is? 1. 2 times 36 is 72. The answer is 170, uh, 172nd. All right, so problem number 30 is actually kind of a fun little quadratic problem. So it says, what percent of the interval uh, with endpoints of negative 5 and positive 5 consist of real numbers? So we're looking for a percent. We know that we're looking for numbers between these two. And so, and those two numbers are 10 apart. So we know our answer is going to be something over 10. That makes it really nice. So let's start with the uh, inequality. So we have x plus 1 is less, is greater than 8 over x minus 1. OK, let's get all the x's in one place. I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 1. And that will leave me with, over here, x squared minus 1, because this is a difference of squares. This is a quick little multiplication. These cancel out, and we get 8. Now, to solve a quadratic, it has to be equal to 0 in a factored form. So let's subtract 8, subtract 8. And I don't have to flip the sign, because I'm not multiplying or dividing by a negative. So I get x squared minus 9 is, less, is greater than 0. OK. Well, let's factor this. So we have x plus 3 times x minus 3 is greater than 0. OK. Why did I do this? Well, this is giving us some sort of idea of where to start. I know that if I have a number line, let's call this negative 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5. So here's our number line. So right now, I know, looking at this, that if I have x at negative 3 or positive 3, I will get these two sides equal to each other, which cannot be. So that's why I have my open arrows here. And so really what I need to happen, figure out is what's going to happen um, on either side of these. And I have one more thing I have to point out. If I look here. I have x minus 1 in the denominator. And I know, I know that x minus 1, if I, x is 1, I'll get 0 in the denominator. And you can't have 0 in the denominator. That's just not, it's undefined. So I know when x is 1, we'll have another boundary line. So all I need to do is figure out in each one of these four increments whether it satisfies the expression or not. So I only have to try four numbers. And I will figure that out the whole thing. So let's start with negative 5. So if I plug in negative 5, I get negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 is greater than 8 over negative uh, 6. And is this true? Well, the answer is no, it's not true because this is going to be negative 1 and a half. Maybe not one and a half. But anyways, it's going to be a lot bigger than negative 4. So I know that the numbers on this side will not work. All right, let's plug in negative 1. If I plug in negative 1, I get 0 is greater than, and this is negative 5, this is negative 1. 0 is greater than 8 over negative 2. 
Well, is this a true statement? Yes, because 0 is greater than negative 4. So that means all the numbers between these two boundary lines will work. All right, uh, let's plug in 2. So if I plug in 2, I'll get uh, 2 plus 1 is 3 is greater than 8 over 1. That is false. So I know that everything in this region will not work. And finally, the last one, let's plug in 5. So I get 6 is greater than 8 over 4. 8 over 4 is 2. So we get 6 is greater than 2, which is a true statement. So it means that all of these numbers will also work. Okay. Well, if this whole thing is 10, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 out of 10 equal regions will work. So that is 60%.